Oh, the next talk will be by Olivia Quinte, and she will be talking about mixing the pimple item. Okay, hi everyone. So my name is uh, Olivia Kine or Oli Kine. So I will be speaking about mixing uh, pimple item with uh, multiple inheritance and facet pattern. So for C++ 11 project that we have in production. So I work in Clupons. Clupons is a software company that provides a solution to analyze clinical data coming from pharmaceutical companies. So when pharmaceutical companies want to put a drug on the market, they test it in different uh, hospitals. They record a medical record from patients at different time. And so in short, the solution is just uh, we have a um, HTTP uh, um, <laughs> software and it goes back up to the C++ um, library that I will speak about. So I was already saying something about it. So you have the, the hospital, the patient, the visit, and we collect the, the data sets. And in fact, data sets are simply, a, we can say, a MySQL table, and we run the statistical test on them. And at the end, we have something that is called a matrix of p-values. So the statistical tests are coded for a moment in C++. And uh, for that, we needed a framework. But, uh, and uh, I used the PIMP interface. So we have a, a collection of uh, public objects that are created. And uh, we have different requirements for those. So they must be always in the current state even if they are empty. They must be immutable, and they must be shared, shareable, because we want to have the, the test into different vectors or set or maps or whatever. And they are also we have to support multi, multiple inheritance. So to do that, I won't present code, I will just present uh, class relationships. So we have the public class called PIMP that contains uh, privately a member called M underscore PTR, which is simply a shared pointer. We have an empty constructor. We have a constructor that takes uh, the, a shared pointer and some member to test if it's valid. And uh, also one very important function is the get PTR, which is written a uh, shared PTR of the given type. So it's simply doing a then cast. And for example, for all the tests, uh, we created a base class test that's simply derived for PIMP. So empty constructor, simply called the empty constructor from PIMP. And uh, the one with the share pointer or simply the PIMP. So, and so for, uh, in case of simple inheritance, so we have a test called, called beta minomial, it's simply uh, this kind of uh, relationship. So we have the public interface in pink and the private instance in the blue. So uh, we have two constructors depending on what kind of analysis, what kind of uh, test we want to run. Those uh, public constructors called, are calling the static build uh, function in the private instance which are returning a share pointer, and that share pointer is simply passed to the uh, public constructor. So beta minimal, uh, the PTR, which called back the, that constructor, which called back again the PIMP constructor. So it's very easy. And uh, I mean, it makes a measurement for the cost. It's about two times lower than direct access to the private instance. So for my application, it was uh, sufficient because the object, most of the time, is spent in the constructing the object, but accessing the memory is quite fast and is done only once during the run of the program. With multiple inheritance, so that's for a CNR test. So it's a bit more complicated <laughs> relationships, but it's about the same kind of construct. So for, uh, every time you have a, a public constructor, you call the, the build a static function in the private uh, class, which return a private uh, a share pointer, and you pass it this time, of course, to the base class, which called the test and the PIMP. 
and the cost this time is uh, two times slower when you want to access the actual object, but if you want to access a, a sub subclasses, it's about three times slower because he has to do a dynamic cast to the right object. So that's about it. And so I will speak now about the facet pattern with PIMP. It's quite easy to do. So we have an object called analysis. And we want it to have to be able to do the analysis header for each uh, location. So that means for each uh, hospital. Or we want to do the analysis for each patient. But of course, uh, they don't have access to the same kind of data, even they are referring to the same uh, root object. And we want to protect, uh, we want to, to be sure that the test do not call the, uh, the, the wrong function. So, and we are also to do some mapping. So for example, when you do the analysis by patient, the size of the problem is the number of hospitals you are considering. So the get size is mapped to the get location, and the get names is mapped to the get location. So but when you do it by patient, the get size refers to the number of patients. And uh, when you want to do the names, you are simply returning the names of the patients. And so, Doing that way, you have a, one way, a clear interface to, to do your analysis, and you don't access, for example, to the location when you're doing the analysis by patient, because it's, poor. it's prevented by the public interface, because it's derived for, by uh, uh, protected. So that's it. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions.